Hey guys, it's Kelsey. I'm back with another scrapbooking process video. This first part is going to go super fast because it's just me organizing which pieces go to which page. So it will slow down after I get through this first part, but I didn't want you to have to sit through this real time or even half sped up because it was just a lot. I was saving this Simple Stories Christmas pack to do a live with. Um, and then I just kept not having time to do lives and because I am a chronological scrapbooker I was really hung up on these Christmas pages and I kept skipping them but then I got to the point where I was getting like too far ahead and not able to put things in my books because I'm missing pages and all that kind of stuff so I was like you know what I just need to sit down get these Christmas pages done so that I can move on to some other pages that I actually want to scrap. I'm one of the weird ones that does not like scrapbooking Christmas. So I was really happy when I found the Simple Stories packets because I knew it would help me scrapbook Christmas really easily. Um, and because this pack has two set of doubles, I get four 12 by 12s out of it. It was like the perfect amount of pages and product I needed to get through last Christmas. So I was like, okay, we're just gonna go ahead and do this as a normal process video. I really wish I could have done it as a live. I really enjoyed the last time I worked with one of these simple stories packs as a live and you guys were able to help me add extra stuff. Um, so that's why I was waiting so long because I had so much fun doing that, but um, I just need to get them done. So <laughs> I think we're almost done with me going through everything. I'm pretty much just laying whatever pieces go to each page um, via their diagram. And then I'm just gonna focus on one page at a time. So this process video will just be the first page of the first double, and I'll just work through them this month like that. <laughs> um, so I can get through them and get Christmas done and then be able to move on. So at first I'm thinking I might work and just do both of these 12 by 12s together as one double, as one process video. Um, but then timing wise, it just worked out better to split them up and then that way you kind of have more videos spaced out as well. So I'm just gonna start with this first one. You can kind of see everything I've pulled aside. That pile to the left is all the stuff they used on this page. Um, the stuff at the top are kind of the extra things that they included that I could use as embellishment instead or in addition to the other things. So what I typically like to do when I have a kit like this that kind of lays everything out for you is I like to go ahead and lay everything out the way that they did and then tweak it from there. So I like the banners that are running across the bottom, definitely going to keep that. And then there is a kind of floral seven by something, no, seven by nine. Uh, that both of the four by sixes are layered on top of so I'm definitely going to keep that but you'll kind of see I'll tweak things as we go. Uh, I also have a couple other things from potentially the same collection <laughs> that someone had sent me in happy mail that I've used for several Christmas layouts but I'm going to try and pull in scraps from that too. Uh, so I have that kind of next to me off screen but this is that one layer and then I'm going to go ahead and map both of my photos on some white. I don't, I can't really tell if they did that in theirs or not, but I definitely want that pop of white um, to kind of separate the photos from the background. This uh, layout is of Christmas Day, so there's a picture of me and Marcus and then a picture of me, my mom, and my sister, Becca. And I just wanted to document them. They were, were just kind of being goofy, taking pictures and stuff. I had more serious pictures of the two of us and the three of us, uh, but I just like these more candid, funnier ones better. So I'm gonna use these instead and hopefully they won't mind. I know Marcus won't mind. He's, a, he's very proud to be a goofy goober. So um, <laughs> I'm going to try to space them out. Normally I like to map my photos together. So I kind of tried to see how it would look if I put them together, but I actually like in this case that you can see the strip of the background. Um, I was, I would be too tempted if these photos were stuck together to gut that. <laughs> <laughs> and try to use it on the next page, which I could have done. Um, but I struggle with using Christmas stuff anyway, so I'm really trying not to gut and save this product. I really just want to get it used up. Um, and I think you'll kind of see as this page progresses that I just keep adding because I'm like, I've held on to this stuff forever 
and I'm saving it for a Christmas layout and now I have a Christmas layout so I just want to use it now <laughs> so uh, I try to find a balance but I like how those photos look spaced out like that so I'm going to go ahead and glue down this layer and again it was really hard not to mat this background plaid <laughs> but um, I just don't think I would have used it on another page so I'm just going to go ahead and use it up. <laughs> so this is the, the foundational layering that I have glued down now. Now the rest is embellishment. So before I start laying out all the embellishment, I'm going to pull out my leftovers from this collection and uh, just see if there's anything I want to use. A lot of it's just scraps and then you'll see me try to toy around with using a couple of these paper scraps if I wanted to add a layer. But the green was just a slightly different toned green and the red was just a slightly different toned red. So um, I decided actually not to use any of these paper scraps, but I will try to use maybe some embellishment. Um, and then I also remembered as I was pulling all this stuff out that I had also gotten a mystery bag um, from Felicity Jane that was Christmas themed. So I pull out several of those things too. So that little shaker pocket star, which is super cute, um, came in, in my Freckled Fawn goodies, not Freckled Fawn, Felicity Jane goodies. Um, and then I will go through some other embellishment that I remembered I had <laughs> that was saving for Christmas um, from the Felicity Jane stuff, which was like wood veneer Christmas trees and uh, various red and green trims. So I'll try to get incorporate it somehow on this page because I really want to try to get some of it used. But now I'm going to go through the process of just laying out um, the embellishment, how they had it marked out. So I'm just going to stick it down the way they did and then I'll tweak it as I go if I want to change anything. So I really like these two poinsettias in the corner that kind of creates the big cluster. Um, there's that big circular label above it. Um, a banner and like a chipboard lantern and I really like how all, all of that looks um, and then there's another cluster to the right of the two photos uh, that's kind of a, a bird and a little framed sentiment and then at the very top of the top photo there's just a mini cluster um, with a holly sprig that and a, a little word sentiment that says happy holidays so I'm just trying to mark all of this out I really like that they give you a mix of chipboard and the paper cut aparts because it kind of gives you that slightly different texture and dimension. But I'm gonna accentuate it a little bit um, by popping up some elements on some foam. So for right now I'm just laying everything out um, how they had it and then I'll kind of decide what I want to tweak and what I wanna pop up. I really like these little chipboard hearts that they give you. So those are definitely going to be on this uh, layout but I decided to start with the largest cluster I actually really liked how they laid out everything so I'm really trying to keep everything still while I glue it all down um, and then the little chipboard lantern embellishment that lays over the poinsettia that is what I decided would have some foam so I'm just going to go through the process of getting all the adhesive on and getting this back down where I had it I have that the three different rolls of washi tape that coordinate with this collection <laughs> that um I was really hoping I could find a use for, um, but because it's already on a plaid background and I already have two banners, I decided it would probably look muddy and just messy if I started adding some more, especially washi that can kind of read translucent sometimes. I didn't want it to start looking muddy, so I actually leave out the washi on this one. <laughs> um, but there is the adhesive backing going on that lantern element. Um, and then I will also glue down the little Merry Christmas black banner. So I like how that's looking. Um, I do try to remember to look at the extras, like the leftover stuff uh, that came in the, the pack and try to use some of that as well. But I can't remember if I did that now or I kind of get all of my clusters down and then add more. Um, but I don't want to just copy exactly what they did. I do follow them pretty strictly for the majority of the page but um, I do don't want to tweak a couple things to make it more my style and use a couple things from my stash just so um, I'm not ignoring them for another year until the next Christmas. <laughs> um, there is this little chipboard bird that they did not use but since the bigger bird ephemera bit is in one of the clusters I thought it would be nice to include 
the other little chipboard burp in another cluster just so there's cohesion that way. Um, so I'm adding a little black good cheer tab to the top cluster and that little chipboard bird to the bottom cluster. And then it was really bothering me that there wasn't much red in the other two clusters because we have this big poinsettia in this cluster plus that red banner across the bottom. So I was trying to see how I could incorporate red. The top cluster has the little holly berries, so there is a little bit of red up here, but I just needed some red in this middle cluster with this bird. So there was a red Merry Christmas uh, sentiment in the leftover bits. So I went ahead and I'm gonna pop that up on some foam as my dimensional element for that cluster. And I, I really like visually what that pop of red does over there. It is going to kind of cross over the peace and joy sentiment, but I think it's layered in a way where you can still read it. Um, and it doesn't really bother me that <laughs> those words are kind of laying across each other. It was more important to me to have that red element to kind of tie the points that is in. So I'm gonna get that stuck down. And then I'll focus on our last cluster. The last cluster, I actually don't think I popped up anything on some foam because those three hearts to the left, I'm gonna pop up on some foam. And I just felt like if I also did that holly sprig or something, there would just be too many things <laughs> with dimension all together. Um, so I'm gonna wait, but this is where I realized like, oh, I have some other Christmas stuff I've been saving that I want to pull out and consider uh, before I completely finish this page. So I go through and I pull out all the red and green Felicity Jane trim. And then here are the wood veneer um, Christmas trees. And I even have this gold angel paper clip. I've had that forever, like so long. And I keep forgetting to use it when I have a Christmas page. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. There's no gold in this collection, but I'm thinking maybe if I incorporate some gold Heidi Swap Color Shine, uh, I can squeeze that angel in somewhere, hopefully. <laughs> um, but if not, at least hopefully I can get through some of this trim and some of those wood veneers. So now I'm also trying to keep that in mind while I finish the page. Um, I forgot I did not uh, stick that bird down yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and put some foam on that as well and get that stuck down. And then I realized while I was at it, I might as well try to squeeze in one more sentiment. So I really like that little merry and bright uh, piece. So I'm just going to layer that down with the little bird just for a little bit. I just <laughs> don't think typically I would have added those two elements, but this page, I was just like, use all the things. I'm finally doing a Christmas page, just use it all. <laughs> So my editing eye was not as refined on this page, um, but it was still really fun to do. And I kind of felt like because I was following their layout so strictly that I, I was really pushing myself to use things they didn't use. So maybe that's why I just kept adding things. <laughs> um, but it's okay. It's, it turns out fine at the end. It's just busier than I normally like my pages. But it was really fun to put together, which was exciting because I usually just dread doing Christmas layouts. I don't know why I don't like Christmas layouts. I don't know if it's the color combos or just it's the, the same type of page every year with the same kind of sentiments and icons. And it just, I don't know if it's boring or part of it, I think, is because I'm a chronological scrapbooker. I am like never scrapbooking Christmas during Christmas time when I'm actually in the Christmas mood and I think that might be part of it it's just really weird to try to get in the Christmas mood when it's May and my house is 80 degrees and the windows are open like I just not feeling Christmassy <laughs> so um that's where I'm at right now I did find this other hydrangea die cut that was in the extra bits that had a little joy sentiment on it and I really liked it because there's hydrangeas on this page so I was really trying somewhere to add this other hydrangea piece because I think it would coordinate really well but it was just not working so maybe on the companion page I can find a spot for that because I don't see where they have used hydrangeas on the companion page so hopefully I can try to use that on that one and it'll help tie the hydrangea element across both pages, but it wasn't happening on this one. Um, and now I'm just staring at the page because I'm like, what else do I need to do? Um, 
And then I do, I don't like this weird gap that was above the poinsettia below the hydrangea. So I did just add one of the extra circular elements. I used the one with the deer because the companion page does have a deer on it. So I was like, okay, I'll use this little hydrangea element on the deer page and then the deer element on this page. And that way they'll coordinate a little better. Um, now I'm adding the wood veneer Christmas trees. And I was trying to figure out where I wanted them. I wanted to at least use two. I really like the placement of the first one. I was just trying to find the best spot to do the second one and I end up landing over here on the right hand side. So there's kind of one on either page. And then I realized when I tried to use it with the top cluster that it shifted because I forgot I had not glued them down yet. So I'm gonna stop and glue down this last cluster really quick. Um, but I really do like those Christmas trees. Again, it just adds, like I don't know if it, it makes it more cluttery, but I'm really glad I got them to, those two used up. Um, and this collection is more of the the vintage style, vintagey style Christmas. So I think the the that darker wood veneer of those Christmas trees goes really well, um, especially because that top photo, Marcus and I are against a wooden retaining wall. So I think the texture kind of complements the photos as well. And then I was also really determined to try to use some of this trim, and I realized that I had enough of this green squiggly trim to be able to go across both 12 by 12s. So I felt like the bottom was just open anyways and I think filling it in with this trim adds some interest, it adds some texture, um, but I like that it's going to really connect both of these pages and run completely edge to edge. So I'm just using my Nouveau glue to glue down this trim um, and then I'll just have to remember to put this trim on the companion page as well. Um, but I, I like that extra bit. I'm really glad I got some trim used up because um, I don't use trim that often and <laughs> I was saving that to use on a Christmas page. So now I'm going to try and trim the excess. Uh, I think I still need to glue down the Christmas trees and then um, I kind of want a finishing touch. So I was thinking maybe using enamel dots or maybe my white Nouveau drops uh, would be nice. But then I kind of, the golden angel paper clip caught my eye. <laughs> so I was like, I really should try to incorporate some gold, um, especially because there's just no metallic on this page. Not that all my pages have to be metallic, uh, but I feel like Christmas gold just goes so well. And if I'm gonna pull in this angel somewhere, I really want there to be gold on the other pages so they all kind of go together. So I'm going to shake up my Heidi Swap Gold Color Shine and kind of splatter on the diagonal. I need to also remember to use gold on the next page. Hopefully I won't forget. I also pulled in my gold Nouveau Drops thinking I might also do some gold Nouveau Drops. Um, but the gold Heidi Swap Color Shine, which is a gold I really, really like, has a very bright yellowy tone. And if you can see, those Nouveau drops just have a more duller, almost green undertone. And I just didn't want to mix those golds. Um, and I felt like, I don't know what I felt. I just feel like this, this page was already, there's a lot. And I don't want to add a, a different toned gold element somewhere else on top of everything else. So this is where I end up leaving it. Here are the close-ups. Thank you guys so much for watching. And then stay tuned for part two of this double, which should be the next one you see. Thanks for watching. Bye.